Welcome back to PGHN Design. Today we are going to talk about how to create this four prong setting with the cathedral ring shank. Are you ready? Let's get started. We're going to starting with the round stone here and you can download this stone at the description below. Uh, just sign up the newsletter, then you will get a link to download the stone to follow along. So let's starting with the front view. Every time when I starting to making a ring, always front view because we need to know the ring size. And many people has asked me like, what size should I do? Should I do it bigger, smaller? Because the shrinkage, I always will suggest you do exactly the same size of the ring. So now we have the ring size here for my demo is 16 millimeter in the diameter and we need to start drawing the shape. Before we set it up for the ring, I'd like to do the setting first. So let's go ahead to draw the setting. So I'm going to draw a straight line for the jeweler to set, which means you will need to have the prong is a bit uh, longer and I'm going to draw something like this a little bit over the center so that will be overlapping there and I want to draw something look like this and if it is not uh, the right one it's okay we can always change later few things you need to consider first is this prong too thin compared to this stone the prong itself right now if I measure this is like 0.8 millimeter and that's the stone itself if you measure with the vertex and we are going to get from this point to this point and that's 5.63 millimeter that might be okay but i also want to make sure that uh, it's enough also, you can have a stone cutting 20% the most, right? So I would like to pick up those two points, kind of move it down just a little bit like this, all right? And I always like to have this prong just a little bit taller than the table. And if you are going to go for the rendering purpose, I will suggest you go something like this. And instead of have the flat surface, we are going to delete this one and we can simply just blend in between, in between here and here. Okay. And uh, if this is too puffy, you can always holding the shift, move it down. So they will move it down two arm at the same time. And let's click OK. Now let's join all of this back. And since I already do that, I'm going to pretend this is for the rendering and I'm just gonna join them. All right, we are going to having a shank, like a bridge underneath it. So this may not need to go all the way to the bottom. So we might need to move this up, right? But you don't wanna touch the stone bottom too much. We might just simply moving this one up a little bit. Okay, it will be nice everywhere has a little bit of fillet. So I'm going to use the fillet and let's try point three five and I'm going to fit it the corner here inside is actually doesn't matter uh, because this will be blocking from the stone at the rendering but I still like to fit it that as well and I want to fit it this part as well okay this part right here in the middle will be overlapping so that will be fine Let's take a look on the top view. So we got something like this. The stone doesn't cut more than 20% of the prong. Prong is thick enough. And to making this prong, we can simply just using the solid, extrude it planar, curve straight and giving a thickness. That's one way to do. Now, in some cases, you might want to make it a little bit taper from the top. So what you can do is coming over here, I'm going to moving this one to the side a little bit and just tilt it with the gumbo just a little bit like this. And we wanted to mirror that piece to the other side. So now I have two curves there. I can use the commands called loft. I'm going to loft in between this. All right. So this is what you see. You can see this taper is more graceful. And if you like the shape and how it taper, you can use the command cap CAP and you will close it. So now it will become solid. Once again, take a look on the render view and see if that is the proper size. 
Now, is everything look all right to you? This is too sharp for the rendering purpose. So I'm going to do the fillet edges. Now, remember last time we fitted right at this point, it was 0.35. So what I like to do is do something smaller. Otherwise I will have issue. Let's do 0.2. And we want to chain edges equal yes on the top command bar. And we're going to click on everything here. We don't actually need to uh, fit it on the very center straight line. So that's fine. And let's hit enter. And we'll get something like this. Double check if that is round enough. If you end up with the naked edges, if not, we're going to do it again and hit enter. Okay, so that is one prong. We will need to have four prong. I simply just want to use a ray polar and we're gonna snapping into the zero. Number is equal four. And uh, we want 360 degrees or so we'll get something like this. All right, so now in order to have our setting look nice, I need to have all this prong right here to be rotated 45 degrees. So they are in this orientation there. Okay, that's hiding this curve over here. And let's take a look on the rest of the shank. Now the shank, what I like to do is have something really nicely flow into here. Right, so let's go ahead to split with the point on this one and this one so they become top and the bottom. The one on the top, I'm going to draw a straight line. And remember now you are snapping everywhere. You can disable your old snap so you're not snapping crazy. And I'm going to draw a straight line going up like this. Okay, what it does, it's going to help us to draw a really nice curve by using the command called blend. And I'm going to blend from this end of the straight line that we just draw and to the bottom curve right there. So I'm going to turn it into the wireframe and going to use the blend command and I'm going to blend between this straight line to the bottom line right there. As you can see, this line currently is cutting into the circle, which is inside of our ring shank, and that is not going to work. So I'm going to moving this bar up and going to move this one up as well. So then click OK, and that will be the curve we wanted to use for the sweep. That's working on the profile. I'm going to draw a rectangle, again snapping into the endpoint or the quadrant, depends on how thick you want on this ring. So it's roughly over two millimeter, over one millimeter thick. And I'm also going to explode it. And we don't need this one that's using the arc tool, snapping into the endpoint to the endpoint coming up like this. And don't forget to join all of them and kind of moving from the midpoint to the quadrant. If you feel like this is a little bit too thick, you can always turn on the control point and kind of just moving the point to change the thickness. Again, I like everything is nice and round, so I'm going to give it the fillet. Let's fillet the corner, let's try point three, and then we'll get something like this. All right, let's give it a try. If I'm going to use sweep one rail and this is your rail, this is your cross section and then you will get something like this. And notice that it keep exactly the same thickness and it's kind of folding there too is because we have this coming up like that and it doesn't look nice. So what I like to do is I'm going to making a copy with the gumball, just hit the all key and we'll get something like this. And I also want to rotate this guy a little bit and to make them taper, let's go ahead to 3D scale and moving this profile back to here, tucking underneath it, something like that. 
All right, let's give it a try. We are going to use the sweep one rail. Let's go ahead, sweep one. And this time, make sure you record a history. This is the rail, this is your cross section, and this is the second cross section. And let's hit enter, and we'll get something like this. All right, it looks nice to me. Also check on the side and see if that is the good thickness over there. All right, so let's give it a test. We are going to pick up the curve and also this piece that's mirror to the other side. And we want to create a bottom of a ring shank by going sweep one rail again. And we're going to, using this cross section and this cross section there, and hit enter, and it will get something like this. Before you join them, I would like to create this bridge one more time. Now, if I am going to use this as a rail, let's go to the surface. I want to sweep one rail and going to go from here. This is your cross section. This is your cross section. You also want to record a history, hit enter, and we'll get something like this. All right. So basically, I have this exactly the same thickness like the bottom that we have, and it's quite thick over there. So what we can do is simply just 1D scale down to the proper thickness and to see how it goes. Now, right here on the top, it seems a little bit too tall too. So instead of uh, using this curve, I'm actually need to making a copy by Control C and Control V and 3D scale down this guy. So not only I'm making it not as wide, it also thinner too. And we're gonna move in this guy to the quadrant. Let's give it a try. I'm going to use the sweep one rail. This is the rail. This is the cross section. And now we'll get something like this. Let's go ahead to record the history one more time and double make sure that's what you want. Now, if this is kind of a too thin to you because I do not like this point coming out, I do want to have the top is a little bit wider. Since we record the history, we can just want the scale with the gumball and they will coming out a little bit like this. All right, so if that look nice to you, let's go ahead to join this guy, this guy, and this guy with the join command. And to close it, we can use the cap command, CAP again. And we pick up this one to close it. Now, this is a solid, but it's really a straight cut over there. So we're going to use the fit edges. And let's try point 0.2 with the chain edge and see how it goes. All right, as you can see, like this has some issue over there, as you can see. This is overlapping and this is uh, extra space coming out. So let's delete this one. I guess we need to try smaller than a point two. So let's try point one there. Again, chain H. And then that will work. Double make sure right here on the closed solid poly surface that is still applied. And we're gonna come in over here for this. Okay. So now we pretty much finished this one, but one thing I would like to address is the production. So now think about this, even without a stone, uh, you print and cast the whole piece. The most difficult place to polish will be this area right there with the point, and also all the area in between this prong. This will be really hard to polish, right? So a lot of time, what I will do is I will separate them into two parts. So we need to make a puzzle piece. First is this red one, and then the other one is this one. And so to make sure the puzzle nicely, this is what I will do. I will actually making a copy, Control C and Control V, and hiding one of it. With this one, I'm going to pull in difference with this one. So you can see on the bottom, this is really nice curve that will fit into that bridge over there. And then I'm going to come into the top to make a cylinder, starting from the midpoint. And this post doesn't have to be too big. So I want to do the diameter. It's about 0.8 millimeter. So let's type it 0.8. And then 
as long as it's longer than the bridge that will be fine then we're gonna call back with this bridge and what we wanted to do again now is making a copy of this post and one of it I'm going to turn it into the red color and this one it's going to boolean unit with the head there the other one right there just want to enlarge tiny bit and I would like to boolean difference this guy out of this guy all right so now if I moving this piece up and what you're going to see is a hole over there so what we're going to do is cast them separately and once you get polished you can have this one solder it back and simply just flow some solder here and trim the extra so the whole piece will be nice and polished i hope you enjoyed the video please let me know how you like it leave the comment below thank you for watching and i'll see you next <laughs>